Hello, and welcome back to our Ada adventure. I'm really interested in data-oriented design. And as part of that, I need to deal with two fundamental things. In C, they would be called arrays and structs. And it turns out in Ada, they're pretty similar. Not quite, but you know what I mean. So we have a struct, which is a collection of a heterogeneous data type. So we can have all sorts of different fields, but that is all wrapped together. Now in Ada, that's called a record. And then in Ada, arrays are arrays. So let me just open this up and I'll do a super quick demo. There we go. Okay, try that again. Got it set up. All right, cool. So let me just go to this source file, the Ada body, and just a little quick note. So this section between the um, procedure is and then begin is where we can declare stuff. So I'm going to declare that I'm using this package. Now the benefit of that is that I can simply, I know that I like to be explicit, but I think this is pretty good too. Okay, so where was I? So I'm going to declare um, what's called a type and I'll keep it super simple, we'll make a person. There we go. So this is gonna be a record. And in between here, we can declare our fields. So I'm gonna give the person a name and an age. And I'll talk about this maybe a little later. Strings are weird. They're super weird. Um, actually, they're pretty similar to C strings, but anyway. All right, so now I'm gonna make an array of people. And I guess originally when I thought of this example, I thought of like a class of students. I know that might be a little confusing with object-oriented um, stuff, but Ada doesn't even have they're called different things. They're not called classes in object-oriented Ada. So here we have it, just super, super naive. This is probably the way we'd write it in C. And I'll talk, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that. But to start with, let's just go, go with this. So what I'll do is first up, I'll make some people. Okay, so this class, that's the name of it, is an array and I'm going to start filling it up. So I'll say um, element zero will be a person of some sort. And I'll put the brackets here. Uh, whoops, of course. Put the brackets here and we have these options. These are our fields. So for the name, I'll go start it with A. There we go, something like that. So we've got three people defined. And yeah, I mean, as I go through this, you'll find that we do get some errors, but I want to inspect that because reading errors is super, super important. So now I'm gonna inspect the people. Inspect them, okay. So I'm going to loop through and print out everyone's name and age. So the way I do that is I'd say for I in, we'll go, I'm going to start at zero up to now I in you know C plus plus or something we go dot and then something but that's actually not going to work so well so what I'll do is I'll put the asteri um apostrophe apostrophe is that it I don't know um, and I'll get an attribute of this and the attribute that I'm going to get is the all right so we're going to loop and what we're going to do inside the loop is we're going to write out some info. First of all, let's just print the name. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can run this. So we'll go Alir run, and we get a whole lot of errors. Now, if we look through this list of errors, some of these are just style warnings. It's a matter of preference, but here we have um, line 16, that's this one. Wait, line eight, sorry. Okay, line eight, character 16, column 16. It says we have <clears throat> an unconstrained subtype in a component declaration. 
Okay, so this record has a component called name, data type is string, and if we put string with no size, then that is worked out on the fly. But the problem is that the compiler will not know how much space to allocate for each record. So in C, a string is actually an array of characters, which means it's a pointer, which means no matter how big the string is, the pointer to it is always the same size. Not so with Ada. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, let's, let's do this. Let's go zero to, that's seven there, right? So zero to six, I guess. So that should be allocating enough space for all the strings. We'll try this again. I'm intentionally running into errors. So uh, static, what is this? Line eight, this one here. Okay, static value out of range of type standard position. Okay, now I'm sure, and then it says we have a constraint error. So I'm sure there are ways to fix this because you know, I hate starting arrays at one, but let me just go ahead and, and do this anyway. So I'll just shift all of this. Okay, so it says that it built successfully, but it's throwing an error. And the error checker is actually good enough to catch exactly what that error is before, like runtime errors can get caught in the build process. Okay, so all these style warnings, that's fine. Okay, line 10. Is that? No, it's line 16. Okay, wrong length of array for standard string. So this is what I dislike about strings, is if we say it has to have seven characters, then it has to have seven characters. And in a future installment, I'll be re-examining strings. Okay, all right. So as you can see here, it has built, it has run, it has put out people's names. There are just some, some weird errors. So for instance, line eight, uh, column 14, space required. So if we go to line eight, 14, here we are. So it says that we should put spaces here. And I'll just go ahead and, and fill all of this in. It's probably going to want a whole lot of these. Let's find out what it thinks of that. Okay, trailing space is not permitted, line 11. There must be a tab space issue. It must not like that, um, that empty white space there. Hmm, okay. Let's give that a go. Great, okay, it's, it's built, no errors. Now, clearly, I'm doing a little bit of overkill here. Clearly, we don't have to get all of the style points in this case, but I mean, I had the time, so I went ahead and did it. Okay, so just as a refresher, I guess, we can also look at how we would, would add in the person's name. So let's say we have their name and we wanna say, so-and-so is so-and-so years old. So I want to bring in this is, and then I want, years old. So I actually talked about this. I actually talked about this in the previous video. So I'll take a second, pause the video, see if you can work out how to fix this up. Okay, did you have a go at that? So remember from the previous video that if we want to concatenate strings, that is the ampersand symbol. And this looks like it's going to work. It actually won't. If we were to, to run that, it will throw an error. So it says invalid operand for types for the operator ampersand. Okay, so unfortunately it doesn't tell you what the types are, but we should be able to work that out. We have an integer and we need to convert that integer to a string and that is done with the image attribute. So let's go ahead and do that. Excellent, good. Now, as you can see, we've got all the info we were after. Cool. So this has just been a little introduction to arrays and records. Again, an array is an array, sort of. They're a little strange, but um, a record is a struct. Is another way to think about it. All right. 
So all the best, hope you had fun, and I will see you again soon. Bye.